Jürgen asked me to talk about type on apps, uh, which I thought was a little narrow. So I expanded the, the topic a little bit, if this works. It does work in, in calling it type on screens, because uh, we will be looking at type on screens a lot more. Whether the screens are small or, or large doesn't really make any difference. There are so far still different conditions for, for type on screen. I've been saying this for, for years, if not decades, and eventually it's going to be true. It won't make any difference whether the type lives on, on paper or screen. Um, we've always designed differently. If you design type for a newspaper that's printed on bad paper, you'd pick a different typeface from designing on, in a glossy brochure. The same goes now. I have this, uh, the Greek display, or the Retina display. Um, you could have a, an old display and you have to just go for the worst case because nobody knows what the users will be using. So at the moment, we still have to des design stuff that works on all um, displays, however bad or good they may be. I have the brand new one, and most type looks horrible because it's too sharp. Uh, my typefaces look really good because I always make them a little stronger. I've never liked those thin typefaces that most designers like because designers like even grayness, which is the worst thing for a reader. Even grayness is nothing that you want to read. So apparently, this, this, this is really all about um, you know, how, how a, a, you see a brand through its typeface and there's also the function aspect. Like I said, you have to design stuff for screen, but you, ha you shouldn't forget that you're also branding on a very, very small space. In other words, uh, on, a, on a very small screen, say on an iPhone, which probably 90% of the people in this room have, or a smartphone, I should say, the, the function has to be the brand. If it works well, it has to be branded at the same time, because it's, if it's branded and not work well, it, it won't work well for the brand. So that's, that's the premise. Um, just quickly that, you know, for Hollywood, of course, again, you all know this, that we have been designing a lot of typefaces for specific uh, companies, brands, in, uh, international outfits, like Bosch or this one that most Germans know. If you, if you don't know, it doesn't matter. You don't have to know. Um, for the foreigners, it's the Deutsche Bahn of the German railways. I also branded Nokia way back in, what was it, 2001? With this typeface, which was made for screen at the time, and the screens at the time, as you can see, were pixels. It was actually bitmaps. And then later, that it became an outline typeface. For some reason, Nokia decided that this was too... They had too much character. Uh, I think that's a really weird thing to say, that our brand has too much character. We want to be bland. I mean, it's called brand, not bland. But maybe they got it wrong, or somebody can't speak English properly. Whatever. They have blandified their brand and have now a generic typeface. I could also speak about other apps. This to me is an app. The house numbers I designed way back. I mean, they're apps, you know, they apply to walls. But uh, I, I shan't talk about this. Uh, just quickly, um, because there's designers in the room here, the way we, we work these days is, uh, funnily enough, more than ever uh, on paper. We start sketching uh, because it's quick. You know, it seems a really primitive method that we print like a few hundred iPhones on paper, cut them out, and then draw on them, and then stick them on the wall. This is way, way quicker than doing all sorts of dummies or prototypes. And then that translates into um, a screen, and the screens have to be dummied, which, may, you know, which is what, what we've always done, a presentation. And there's a couple of tools out there. We've been using, using uh, Kinotopia, which is a little app that, that provides you uh, with all the elements. You know, the, the little the icons, the, the, the bars, the scroll bars, what have you, the buttons. Uh, and you, you, you design this in, in, uh, in Keynote, and then you move it over to an iPad or to a phone. So you can dummy it to your client. It's actually a Keynote uh, or a PDF presentation, but it looks like the real thing. It's very useful. It's very quick because, you know, you, you don't have to go to code. But from there, you go to code. So, you know, wireframes are way out. There's another program that I just uh, started trying out last week, Antitype. 
a bit of an unfortunate name, I think, but um, uh, it, again, it provides you with these, uh, these elements that you can just uh, dummy up and then, and then look at it on any old screens. It's very, very fast. Um, you can make a, an app, an interface in, in an hour, uh, and then show it to each other, to yourself, to your client. So those are the sort of tools we need, sketching and those, those apps. Now, um, branding and type is really my, my, my topic. So here's an, uh, a dummy for an app that we built. And I give you, well, there's Germans in the room. Uh, what brand do you think this is? Huh? Yeah, it's, well, as you can see, see, there's only one clue in there. Um, Stationswahl, you know, the, the, the choice of station. It's for a car hire app, as you can see. And because it's Futura, it's Volkswagen. So obviously, it's not the only screen. And the more type you have, the more brand you have. But this is all you have on that small space. You're not going to put the logo everywhere. Uh, Volkswagen is blue. If it were Audi, it would have to be red. Um, not every car company has such an obvious color. But Volkswagen is blue and, and, and Futura. Uh, they call it VW Headline, which we redesigned for them in the, in the mid-90s. But that's all you have. And this is an, an iPhone screen. I've enlarged it a little, little bit here. But on that small space, you know immediately I am with Volkswagen, with VW, which is what it's all about. Um, I'll give you another um, app that we just worked on. This is the before business. Our RBMA is Red Bull Music Academy. Uh, it's a bit of a mouthful. It's pretty... This is the, the one that exists at the moment. The new one uh, isn't quite live yet, but it's kind of like live any minute now. Now, this is... We didn't design this. I don't want to talk bad about it. There is some typeface there in those, inter, in those um, bars in the middle, but it's kind of like, it's not really branded. It's a very generic app. If you look on the right, right hand side there, it's good old, or bad old Helvetica, I should say. It's a generic Apple app, essentially. Nothing to do with Red Bull Music Academy. This is the redesigned version, uh, and apart from the fact that it has those great horizontal swipes, so you swipe sideways, not just upwards, um, it is well, if it were in focus, you would see that this is actually a typeface. Um, I'll show you in a minute which one it is. So this is our redesign. So it's branded twice. It's branded by color. Or obviously, orange plays a major role. But it is a typeface that comes up all the time. And uh, apart from using web type on, on, uh, um, on websites that these days are easy, you use uh, Typekit, or which is what we use, or, or one of our services. You can host them on your own server. You buy a, a web license from Font, Fontshop, or you buy a web license through Typekit, whatever. It's actually not very expensive. People think it's, it costs a fortune, it costs nothing, compared to the price of what a website costs or to design one. And you have it branded immediately. People, because there's, there's no Red Bull Music Academy or Red Bull app. I mean, there's this little, little logo there, but if you don't really know it, and it's not the best logo in the universe, um, to put it mildly, it's there, but you might as well ignore it. It's totally branded by the typeface. Now, I, I thought at home this morning or last night that I would dare and go out of Keynote here into the browser. I'm mirroring it, so I can't. You'll have to believe me. I'm only, I'm only getting the, the, the top part of the, the app here. OK, well, you have to believe me. <laughs> this is stupid, but you can see it's branded, OK? I could play the music now, which is way cool. You can have radio all day. I only wanted to make the point that the website is branded the same way. It uses orange and the same typeface. So I can't do any more because I can't resize the picture here. It's too much. Normally, as you know, in Keynote, you have a, a preview here, and you have the real one there. So you can fiddle here. Well, this one shows there, but with this projector, I can't do it. <laughs> what is this? I mean, we've been doing this for 30 bloody years, and it still doesn't work. You still can't do a live. Um, show and resizing stuff. It's just so primitive. I hate this. Okay, we're back here. So that's um, Red Bull Music Academy, and that's what it looks like on the, on the Android, which is a little smaller. It's just out of fo just as out of focus. It doesn't really make any difference what platform you're on. You can put f uh, type in, into any app. If you're writing this in code, these are not web apps. These are actually native apps. Uh, the, the type's embedded, nobody can steal it. It doesn't take any data because it's, it's, it's on the device, so it's not like loading times. People keep saying, oh, but fonts are 150 kilos and they load forever, do the hell. A, you can use something like a, an app that will reduce the amount of, of type you actually put in there. 
if you only use in English, you don't need Cyrillic in there, uh, and you don't need ligatures or old style figures if you don't have them. So uh, a font in the end will be 20 kilo, 20 kilobyte, which is ridiculous. Anybody can load that, but in an app, it's native anyway. So loading times is, is not an issue. So that's what this, this particular app looks like on, on the iPhone or on the Android. So that's the typeface. Um, this is, after all, a Jürgen Siebert font shop gig here. But Clan is, uh, maybe it's, it's over the hill already because it's been used quite a bit. United Airlines use it in the, Ameri in, in, in the States because it has those incredible, that incredible range of, of width and, 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 uh, and, um, and weights. So it goes from very light to very, very heavy and from incre incredibly ultra condensed to wide. Now, nobody will use all of them, but you'd be surprised once you start playing that you'll end up suddenly using nine or ten different weights which you thought before, ah, nobody needs that. All we know is book and, and bold. You don't. It's useful um, and it's recognizable. Uh, even if you use the very narrow weights, uh, it still has that, that a good feeling. And it's a, it's a nice headline face. I wouldn't want to read a book in it, but then again, maybe you would. I'm, I'm too old. The cool thing when you do a, a project like this is that uh, this has nothing to do with branding on apps at all, but the, uh, the Red Bull Music Academy uh, uh, has the same branding as Red Bull does, in other words, none. They have this slightly weird logo, the two Red Bulls, which need, desperately needs redesigning, but they're not doing it for now. Um, they have no brand, essentially. They, they support cool stuff. So basically, if it's cool, Red Bull's behind it, whether it's Formula One, well, you may think, I think Formula One is uncool. It's totally stupid having people in plastic cars race around at 300 kilometers an hour and burn fuel is the dumbest sport ever, whatever. But they have, you know, you're in the skateboards and surfboards, wherever, and, and mountain bikes. Whenever people crash into the ground or each other, it's Red Bull, essentially. Um, which is one way to build a reputation for a drink that makes you kind of crazy. Um, but as a client, they're great because they basically say, you know, do whatever is cool. So, the Red Bull Music Academy tours the world. They're in, uh, last year, two years ago, they were in, in 10 different cities. And um, when we design the stuff for each event, we design a different poster, it's a totally different style. For a design studio, that's fantastic because you bring in a couple of illustrators that normally don't work with you. So we do all these different styles. Each one is, dif is decidedly different. It has to be a sort of local feel. It has to reflect the music. There may, there may be you know, a dub in some place. There may be... Um, electronic in another one, there, there may be straightforward pop music in another, so the posters reflect this and they're, they're not really branded at all, so they're actually against the common wisdom of branding, they should all be in clan and orange, but that would be way boring, they reflect the music and, and the local style. For us it's a fantastic project, you know, to do 10 different posters, uh, mind you in about one week. Um, so we brought in all these cool illustrators and the only branding is well, you see that on the right in the middle is the Red Bull music, but it's very inobtrusive. There's even a mini logo on there, which I hadn't even seen before. And on this poster, well, if the Beamer was better, you could see a little bit of type at the bottom. So it's from reduced to, to rich, all, all the styles in the world. And sometimes you build an app that doesn't need any type at all, which is really very cool. That's the only type on this particular app called Sound Prism that you use to play music on. So obviously you don't need type. I mean, the, the first screen tells you these are the keys, but once you've played with it for five minutes, you know that you know, um, A is one above G. You should know that in the first place, actually, if you play music. So this is the, uh, the coolest branded app we've built ever without any type. We do, sometimes we, we, do, we get together with sort of cool people. This, these are the next big thing people. I don't know if anybody's here. There's a little outfit in Berlin. There are coders, you know, the nerds that wear those woolly hats um, in the middle of summer. And they came to us and said, we're building this cool app and we have no idea how to design shit. We don't even know what to call it. So this is a little, little bit of the, the naming issues. Uh, so we came up with a screen feeder, and then uh, Brent isn't here, our, our Canadian friend uh, uh, did, I told you, it's drawing, you know, there's nothing better than doodling. So he did all these doodles about, you know, what, this, what the screen feeder could look like, and you, it's jumping out at you, the solution. It's uh, obviously that one, you know, you feed the screen. So what is it? the screen that eats? I mean, it's, you know, after I don't know how many hours of scribbling, it becomes obvious it could only be this one. I think it's a really cool little icon because um, mm -hmm. it's kind of like scary and silly at the same time. And it looks pretty good on, on the actual iPad. Um, 
because it really sticks out. A, there are no green ones for some reason. People stick away, stay away from green. It's all blue. Um, green ones are rare. Uh, now, maybe other people's screens look different from mine. That's my iPad, I think. Yes, it is. But um, it's a cool little app. I mean, I'm not sure that anybody needs another aggregator. Basically, it pulls in, you, you click on your, your Twitter or Facebook or whatever feeds, and you have another feed, you know, like a meta feed or a super feed. Uh, I think I have Show You and uh, Flipboard. There's, there's thousands of these out there. This one brings them in. I like it and I'll show it here because I think the, the particular typeface is actually pretty cool. We were looking for something that has this immediacy of um, the typewriter, kind of, because we still think even people who, there's probably people here, who, well, everybody here is younger than me, but people in their 20s, they, they don't know what a typewriter is anymore, but they recognize a typewriter, typeface, because this sort of mechanical thing, like if you go, if you drive a car and you, you come up to a railway crossing, and there's a, there's a picture of an old steam engine. Now, a lot of people have never seen a steam engine, but we recognize the icon because it's, it looks like a dangerous piece of metal racing along trying to smash you if you cross. So somehow we, we still know what a typewriter looks like. Those old symbols still work. And, and this F of Sumo is a great mix. It, it's modern. It doesn't have the issues of a typewriter. It doesn't use too much space, but it has this kind of telegram uh, immediacy about it. And if you ever looked at that, that app once, you would always remember it because that image is so strong. That little speech bubble, um, I'll show you again, little speech bubble with a typeface in it. If that was Helvetica, it would just look, look like Apple. You know, it came out of, out of Apple, but it doesn't. It's, a, it's an app that sits within that, that word. It renders beautifully, especially on, the, um, on this particular screen here. A big project comes up. This is a fairly big one. This is, um, does anybody, you all know what Mozilla is or was? Um, the people behind Firefox. Mozilla is now actually a foundation, uh, which means it, has lots of money but doesn't make any or something. I'm not quite sure how that works, but it's not a company as such. So it doesn't make a profit, but it still builds Firefox. And um, Mozilla has always had, I don't know why, uh, Meta as their, as their house face uh, in the early browsers. And uh, they are now teaming up with a telephone company, which I'm not allowed to mention. I hope it doesn't show anywhere. I, I, I try to be very careful. So they wanted something that is kind of like Meta, but not because Meta is everywhere and every. So this is going to be an open source typeface. So right now it's secret, which is weird, and then it's going to be open. So I'm not sure whether I have to be secret about an open source typeface. So in other words, you'll all be able to get it for free. Uh, competition to the Google fonts, most of them are really quite, well, they're like Google, you know, they have no taste. So we basically, you know, it's still all sketching. So I looked at Meta because they like it. And you know, I have the outlines, so um, I have a contact with Fontshop, but it's my typeface, so I can do whatever I like. And um, Meta at the time was deliberately narrow. We're talking about 1985 when I designed it, which is almost 30 years ago. Oh my God, I had hair. That's how long ago it was. And um, it, was too, it was too narrow, really, for screens, because screens, you know, the wider a typeface, the more legible it becomes, within reason. Meta was like 85% of Helvetica. And so if I go back 120%, it's almost like Helvetica. So it takes as much space and, and it, it, it gets it there. So I, I do these really primitive little, uh, little sketches. Uh, I carry them a little further. I sometimes do some digital, but I'm, I, I so suck at doing the digital part. I'm so slow that then Ralph de Corroy takes over normally. And this is from our, our first presentation. Uh, again, we show them, you know, we, we, we can do, we need to do very narrow. We may do extended but maybe in the middle somewhere, we will need weights. You know, this, this would be the extremes. I don't think anybody needs the very heavy, even though I love very heavy typefaces. Uh, I mean, that A, come on. That's the coolest fucking thing. I love drawing fat A's. It's just really, because you do is just do a sort of blob and then you put a dot in the middle and it's an A. Yeah, it's fantastic. It's nothing like an A. I could draw A's for the rest of my life, actually. I'd be very happy. And then people would ask me, what, what do you do for a living? I said, I draw A's. And then watch their faces. That would be great. OK, so this is the, the, the outline. So you, you show what could possibly be done. As you can see, if you do a very compressed, you're not going to do a very light, because it's going to disappear. So you show this to a client, and they think, oh my god, this is going to cost a fortune. And then you tell them, well, you really only have to do one bit of it, which is going to be dirt cheap. And this is the dirt cheap version. Anybody, uh, there's a couple of people in, in the room here who know that 
The bold one is extrapolated. It looks really bad. This is a very early one. The, uh, the middle one is drawn. The two outside ones are extrapolated. In the meantime, they are, they are, they are drawn. We have uh, three extremes, the very light one and, and an even fatter one, and we interpolate between them, and the regular in the middle. So these are the three that will go on the screens. And the next screens will probably be totally wasted because you, can, you can't see shit now exactly. <laughs> this is before, <laughs> and this is after. OK. You get my drift? Well, you, 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 get, you do see something here. What you do see, um, <laughs> I'm telling you what you're seeing. The triumph there is uh, that well, you, you can get it to a little bit. The one on the left is the, is the existing one. I think it's, uh, it's Droid. Uh, is it is Droid from Google? Or? Yeah. I always get mixed up. It's all one of the Steve Madison faces. They all look uh, like each other, of course. It's, it's a nice typeface, but anyway, we, we're one pixel bigger. We're a little narrower, so we get a little more in there. And then there's details that you can't even see. I, have, I like the serif on the I. The client didn't like it for some reason. They gave me the little curve on the L, which I, which I always insist upon. And um, then when you go to those large sizes, suddenly you realize that maybe a lightweight, which normally I would never use on a screen. Lightweights are, as I said, for graphic designers on white paper, and everybody hates them except graphic designers. Because um, they look so cool, but you can't reach it. Um, so on a screen like this, maybe in very large, maybe it is a little delicate. So they will get a light typeface. Now, the, the last one, I thought it was very topical. Um, I'm not going to talk about the London logo. This, uh, for the English viewers, this says there was a heavy discussion in London about the logo for the Olympic Games 2012. Well, there was, but we're not discussing this. This was done in 2009 or something. Um, <laughs> So this typeface, does anybody recognize this typeface, the German audience? Where is this one? It's the German, it's the news, it's the one for the Heute News on the ZDF, the second German TV channel. And um, I, I was going to, but I, I knew it was going to happen, I was going to show about this screen 20 times because we did 20 versions of this typeface. The way it's slightly different by five, five units, in, in, uh, which is not even a pixel on, on the screen. Because the guys in, t in the TV studios, they have you know, probably 30 monitors there, from the old tubes to, to the modern flat ones, and they have to decide on a compromise, because a lot of people still have bad monitors, not everybody has higher resolution flat screens everywhere, so what weight is, is going to look good on your, on your home TV? If you have HD, old type looks really bad. If you don't have HD, this looks really bad. So it's, it, again, it's a compromise. I think we, we provided at least 20 weights. Uh, and then they, they find the right one. And two years later, it's too thin or too wide or whatever because of technology. So this is the one you've, I'm, I'm sure you've all seen that. Well, the German audience has all seen this every night. Well, actually, you haven't because the average age of a ZDF viewer is 60. <laughs> so I see this. You don't see this. Uh, you probably all watch RTL. You don't have to admit it. You all do it secretly. It's like, it's like reading pornos. Nobody ever does, but they sell millions a day. Um, the cool thing there is that um, we not only did we design a typeface, and the brief was, it was interesting. It was very much like the screen feeder brief. They said our studio, and some of you have seen that, very cold studios, all robots and, and green screen backgrounds. There are people, but they, they move in this artificial environment. It was very cold. And then the client said, you know, we're getting a little scared. This is so cold and, and robot controlled. We need some non-digital warmth in there. So why don't you design us a typeface that does that? So I said, okay, let's go to the good old typewriter. Huh. I've been there before. I did Officina, which is basically letter gothic typewriter. So typewriter has saved my li life a couple of times. Um, so I said, okay, let's take typewriter because typewriter A is news still. People still think it's news. We won't do it monospace because it's impractical. You know, it takes too much space and looks gappy. But, you know, what's, what's a typewriter face? It has sort of weird little uh, a weird little serif on the lowercase r. You can see down there on the Arbeitsmarkt or the Kurzarbeiter, whatever. Um, it's a little clunky. It's a little primitive. Uh, it has that sort of immediacy, and it's a good comprom It's a good um, um, addition to Helvetica, which is their house face. So you get the clean Helvetica, or they they think it's called Swiss something because the, the the guys who designed this 10 years ago or 12 years ago thought it was called Swiss. They didn't realize that Bitstream renamed Helvetica. So the ZDF people still think it's called Swiss. God, Swiss, some, some number or other. 
So this is what, what we did for those guys. And then, of course, we had to do the, uh, the icons. And as you can maybe guess, uh, I won't show you the presentation. We made a presentation, of course, where we say the, the slight irregularities in the typeface. There's little kinks in there. Not, the, the curves aren't, aren't um, symmetrical. They're different on the left than they are on the right. So the icons are done the same way. As you can see there, the people aren't totally symmetrical. They're not Otto Aisha um, cut out pe people. They have slightly more character. You can see that with a the woman there. Her arms are different. Not because people have different arms, but you know, <laughs> it makes it a little more dynamic. Um, they still have their heads cut off, um, which I've never liked about those icons. <laughs> Call them floating heads, maybe. And uh, then we animated them. So if you see them on, on the weather chart at night, these are actually, the font is actually animated. So you, you can build animations from a font, which is nice. In other words, it, it, each character has five or six or up to ten instances. And to make an animated GIF from it is a piece of cake. And they love using it in the studio because they can build, build little animations without leaving the, the font ever. And I think this is my, my last picture. I think I did exactly 20 minutes as I was told to, right? So there you yes. go. <laughs> Dankeschön. Thank you very much. Actually, I did, I did 